you can't just take out your money anytime. Even if people are shouting, they're running around, they're saying stock market is crashing or is booming, you are quiet and you're confident. You know exactly what you're doing with your plan. You don't go around and sell your stocks when the market is crashing. When people like us are rushing in to find bargains and find deals, I prefer to have a longer emergency fund. You invest your money how you like it. If you're a doctor or healthcare professional and you're worried about investing and you get confused about investing and things, you worry that it's risky and you worry that you lose money, but you know that you should be investing and you don't understand concept. When you hear things like ISA, stock and shares ISA, it gets you confused. Then you want to watch this video. And this video is a live recording of a live Q&A session with almost 100 doctors and healthcare professionals with burning questions around investing, lifetime ISA investment um, that doctors could do even above 40 years of age, as well as how to avoid the dreaded 60% tax trap and much more. So if you're interested in those topics and you'd like to hear the answers we discussed and the questions that we addressed, then you want to dive into this video. And if you are new here, I'm Dr. Andy Green, founder of moneywisedoctor.com. I'm an ex salary GP an entrepreneur and investor and on moneywisedoctor.com we help doctors and healthcare professionals make smarter financial decisions dive in for someone who is over 40 a friend of mine just came into the country and she was like oh she's heard about isa and all that and i said oh i know that once you are 40 you can't do isa and i couldn't give her an answer on what else she could do to save money you know for <laughs> mortgage that's yeah. one okay my own, my own personal question is um What's your advice if you're over 40 and you want to invest? Yes. And you're thank just starting out. Okay. Yeah. The, those thank are you. all. Thank you very much, Um, It's very, very, very relevant questions. I, I understand. Omolabake means the child that brings joy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So let's dive into the first one. Your friend, you're right. Your friend cannot open a lifetime ISA but they can assess every other ISA. Once you cross 40, and for some of us in the, in the community, you already knew I had my birthday on Sunday, and my wife did this surprise birthday party for me. Um, but I'm not yet 40, but I'm, I'm getting closer to 40. But in this country and in many places, once you turn 40, it's like every, so, some doors start to close. So if you're close to 40, you want a lifetime ISA, you need to do it as quickly as possible. I've popped in, in the link, a video on ISA, very detailed, very comprehensive video on ISA. And I also put in, um, an article we've done for ISA, lifetime ISA that you can look at. But to answer the question for your friend, they can very much assess every other ISA apart from the lifetime ISA. So basically, the mm -hmm. lifetime ISA allows you to save money in a special account. So a special account, the lifetime ISA account. So that's LISA. You can save up to a maximum, you can save any amount you want, but the maximum amount, the optimum amount that gets you the best bonus is £4,000. So in a year, if you can save up to £4,000, the government will give you a bonus of £1,000. So that's the maximum bonus. Obviously, if you save zero, you get zero. If you save 1000 you get 250 So basically, it's 25% of whatever you save in that account, the government is going to give you um sort of like that bonus but it's only for two purposes it's for buying your first house and for saving for retirement so if you haven't bought your first house you're saving towards your first house and you're less than 40 your best bet open a lifetime isa i used when i was buying my first house many years ago i used one called help to buy isa so that's an old one it's been phased out so a lifetime isa is an option for you and lifetime isa is even much better so if you can save up to the maximum amount, you get that maximum 25%. I can do it for multiple years, four years, five years, whenever you're ready to buy your house. And a, a really good thing that works for couples, you can actually open an account for yourself and your spouse. And, you know, you can get a 1,000, your spouse will get a 1,000. Unfortunately, lifetime ISA is for people between 18 to 39 years. Once you cross 40, you can't open a lifetime ISA. Um, obviously, a few things I tend to suggest to people to be aware of, if you decide to leave the country, because I've got like two consultations this last week from doctors in Canada um, that were in UK. So if you, left the con if you leave the country, the lifetime ISA, you can't use it anymore, really. 
you if it's already open you might be able to still put in some money in it um the rules obviously would depend on whatever your provider does and the second rule is that lifetime ISA, you can't really put in more money after 50 years of age so you can put in money until 50 years of age and you can assess it from 60. so from 60 years of age you can start assessing the money in the lifetime ISA. i thought i'll use that opportunity to cover lifetime ISA in case anyone has any questions around it now your friend is above 40 can't get lifetime ISA, but there are other ISAs they can get they can get the cash ISA. so the cash ISA, you can use it to save money so basically, if you wanted to save your money in this country, especially in the, for those of you, I think most of us here are from the UK. So if you are saving money in an account in this country, you might not know it yet. But I've had consultation where people just realize that, oh, they saved this amount of money, they got interest, and now they have to pay tax. So there's a savings allowance in this country. It's changed, I think it changed earlier April this year. Um, I could double check the numbers, but I think it's about 1,000 pounds if you are on a basic tax rate and then 500 pounds if you're on a higher or additional tax rate payer now this this seminar is not for tax tax is a whole different discussion i've had different talks about it but the point of it is that if you save money in your account and it cross you get interest above 500 or 1000 depending on your how you pay your tax that interest is liable for tax you have to pay tax on it so what do I usually suggest? If you want to save money for your emergency fund, because that's what I think you should save, you should save for your emergency fund and think about investing the rest. But if you're saving for a project, you're saving for emergency fund, you put it into a cash ISA. So if you've got a pen and paper, you can write it down or you can look at the article I've posted in the group. You can put it into a cash ISA. So a cash ISA is basically an account that you can save money and it's interest the interest you get is tax-free that's one option for your friend um the second option in terms of isa again isa is basically individual savings account i look at them as tax wrapper just think think about it as a tax protection now the second option for your friend will also answer your question your own personal question about investing and uh, that's the second isa which they call stock and shares isa is by far my favorite ISA, obviously, because I use it for investment and also is tax free. Now, the stock and shares ISA is if you're if you're planning to start investing, I'll say before you invest in any other platform, if you're pl planning to invest any money, whether it's bonds or stocks or index fund, just make sure it's inside the ISA why it should be inside the ISA? always think of ISA like this think about it as a tax wrapper so it covers whatever you're doing let me give you an example to bring it home two years ago i think uh, was it 2022 when when we took a position with meta meta facebook shares we bought facebook shares um it was selling for le far less than what it is now i think it's almost doubled since then now normally a normal basis if you make any money through an investment or trade even if you go to work in this country you have to pay a tax on it but now because that investment was done through an isa account whatever profit we had made from it if you decide to sell it that profit is not liable to a tax so again if the company pays us dividends so we hold some companies that pay us dividends if it pays us dividends those dividends are not going to be taxed you don't need to declare them for tax now if on the other hand you invested that money through a general investment account or through any other way that is not through an isa then the problem with that is that you need to declare it in your self-assessment so that it can be taxed properly if not you're not paying your taxes so that that's basically the advantage of an isa so your friend can still open a lifetime sorry a stock and shares isa and a cash ISA, and those will still be all right. I mean, there are other types of ISAs, but I think they're a little bit outside the scope of this discussion because they're for specialist type of investment, they're for investing in startups like SCIS and the rest of them. But if you remember the ISAs, the basic ones, there's a cash ISA, there's a stock and shares ISA, and there's a lifetime ISA. And if you say, because at the moment, your friend cannot assess the stock and shares ISA, I'll say possibly, sorry, your friend cannot assess the lifetime ISA. I'll say they could 
you take advantage of the cash I saw to save and the stock and shares I saw for investing. Um, there is innovative finance I saw, which most times is not it's not for people who are starting to invest. It's usually for investing in businesses, startups. It's a little bit more risky. There's also opportunity for more reward. Um, I don't know if that was beginning to scratch the surface of your question. Rabake? Yes, yes, it's been all right. So what you're saying is for the second one now, you put if you want to invest, you open the cash and shares, cash and stock ISA, and from them you can invest into any company you want to. Spot on, exactly. This uh -huh. this this is usually difficult for people to get. So people say, should I invest in stock and shares? I said, no, 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 stock and shares ISA is not an is not an investment. It's just a wrapper that you can put in the money. So well done, you got the point. You can put in your money and then from there, you can either invest in individual companies like I do, or you can invest in index funds, which is basically, mm -hmm. you're buying like a bunch of stocks in a basket. Um, we've, have, we've done some videos on index funds. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so, on so the advantage is that you're not going to be taxed if you put it inside the cash. All right, I, but if I, you go directly, to buy the s p you will be taxed that's exactly the point so if oh, you buy you very bond, much. well then so if you buy bond stocks index whatever bonds you will be you won't be taxed on capital gains but you are taxed on your income bonds the different discussion i think we have a whole session dedicated to bonds in the master class so bonds the different discussion altogether all right well i'm glad i've been able to answer that question but something really key and important to mention is that isas you have a maximum of twenty thousand pounds per year because we've had people who wanted to invest more than maybe i've had people who come in for consultation they want to invest quite a bit of money um and the maximum you can put through an ISA is 20,000 pounds. So there are many ways to hack this. Some people will have an ISA for their wife, have an ISA for their husband, have an ISA for their kids. Kids can have the one we call um, junior ISA, which the maximum is 9,000. So in a family of let's say four with two adults, two children, that means you can get a total of 58,000 pounds allowance for ISA. I know some people will say, well, I don't really have 58,000 pounds to invest. That's fine. It's good to learn it now. And when you have 58,000 or 100,000 to invest, at least you know where to go with your money. One last thing. I'm so sorry. No, carry on. Do you still get the 25% on the cash ISA and on the stock and shares? No, there are different instruments altogether. So in lifetime ISA, you get 25%. In lifetime ISA, cash because there's lifetime isa stock and shares but lifetime isa the one you're saving for buying your first house or retirement you get 25 percent government bonus free money but in stock and shares i say you don't get 25 percent you you invest your money how you like it so in stock and shares i saw you put in the money in the wrapper you invest it in cash i saw you're just saving your money but in lifetime i saw you can get 25 percent bonus if you ask me then there's a reason why lifetime ISA, you can't just take out your money anytime. So that's the downside because most time people think about the 1,000 um, pounds. In cash ISA, you can take out your money anytime you like. You're not going to get a 25% bonus, but you can take out your money anytime you want. Whereas in lifetime ISA, the one you can only get below 40, you can only use the money for buying your first house or when you retire. And by that, I mean, at 60 years of age so you can get it earlier than nhs pension does that does that help so very much thank you so much yeah i'm, I'm sorry you will not be getting the 25 percent <laughs> right okay should we, should we go with the next question i think it's muhammad Umer. right okay muhammad sorry before you jump in for anyone who is still a bit confused about the isa I've written a very detailed article from last year. I think it's been visited by thousands of doctors. You can go to that article. It's on the website. Have a, a proper read of the ISAs. If that doesn't work out, then check the YouTube channel as well. There's ISA. If you don't understand anything, even after reading it, write me a comment in the website on the YouTube channel. Ask your question. We'll do our best to answer it as comprehensively as possible. Okay? Mohammed, please go for it. Hello. Yeah. Hi. So uh, one of the, uh, I have like two questions. Um, uh, so one is like, for example, if you have already bought your, uh, bought, bought a home, 
Mm -hmm. and and you want to like there you have plans to like shift to another area yeah and uh, so what what you can do like you can you can open the uh, account for your wife so that uh, that can be helpful is it like does it work like that okay so let me make sure i got it correctly mohammed so if you already own a home yourself yeah you, know, you want to move to another Please, do you mean another country or another location inside the UK? Inside the UK, another location, yeah. Lovely. So, yeah, this is very common, and I've had that situation in the past as well. So, you've already bought a house. That means you are you're no longer a first-time buyer, so you're no longer eligible for the lifetime ISA for buying your first house. But your wife, if your wife has never bought her first house, did not contribute to the buying of that first house, her name is not on the deed. She's not contributing to the mortgage. So in the eyes of the law, in the eyes of basically the government, she's considered as a first time buyer. And some mortgage advisors will say, no, she's not a first time buyer because she's living in the house. But that is not true. That's why you need to have the right mortgage advisors. If your spouse, and this is husband or wife, has not bought their first house and their name is not in the document, she might still be in a position to utilize the lifetime I saw. So what I usually say is open it anyway. If you don't use it for your house, you can cash it out at 60 years of age. Does that, does that help? Yeah. So who is next? Next is Onyedika. Onyedika, please. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I was going to ask some questions about the lifetime ISA and stock ISA, but I think you've clarified that. So yes. just to also say, if I have a lifetime ISA for my for buying a house i can also do a stock and share isa as well absolutely you can you can have both a lifetime isa you can have a lifetime isa stock and share as a cash isa all the isa as long as you've not crossed twenty thousand pounds so twenty thousand pounds is the maximum that you're allowed to put in the isas before you have to pay tax yeah so you can have more than one isa in okay. fact now that you brought that up i think it's a good opportunity to teach something what would what we could do um sometimes people say how much should i put in my isa i usually say you've got twenty thousand pounds think of it as a pot or a pie first of all you want to save your emergency fund but those of you who have already followed our previous video on seven things you need to do before you start investing um i'll share this video so you know you know that one of the things would usually say would be to save your emergency fund before you start investing. Um, so that's that's one of the things you need to do. I'm going to share that here, first of all, one minute. So those of you who haven't watched it, you have the opportunity to watch it. I can find it and share. Oh, thank you very much. Right, so it's in the link now. So basically, if you've got 20K, you can decide, well, I want to save my emergency fund first. So what is the emergency fund? I think Chigo was on the podcast and she did an excellent description. So that's three months worth of your living expenses. Before you invest, don't rush to invest. Even if you are coming to the masterclass, don't get excited. In fact, it's part of what we are going to teach, the things you need to do and make sure you've done it before you start investing so that you are a safe investor. You don't go around and sell your stocks when the market is crashing, when people like us are rushing in to find bargains and find deals. So those seven things are really important. One of it is your emergency fund. So that's three months to six months worth of your living expenses saved in, a, in an account where you can access it easily. So that account, I tend to suggest a cash ISA, not your regular bank account where they give you a funny interest and then also tax you on it. No, you use a cash ISA, you save it there. That's three to six months worth. Obviously, if you've got a salary job and you've got NHS pension, you've got all those things, you might want to save three months. That's fine for a start. For someone like me, I haven't got a salary job. I'm not on the NHS pension. I'm not on any of this stuff. So I prefer to have a longer emergency fund. So if you have an emergency fund, let's say, for instance, like your monthly expenses, just a rough number, let's say it's £2,500 and you wanted to save three months worth of the emergency fund. So you need 7,500 pounds saved up in an account where you can assess it. But it doesn't happen that let's say 
your car has a, a problem, something comes up, or you suddenly lose your job and you need three months period before you start your next job. I mean, we're not praying for any of those things. But your emergency fund is just there to push on you so that you're not shaking if things go wrong. And part of the reason why I was able to step away from my salary job two years ago was having a good emergency fund by the side. I knew oh, even if I start something, by then I hadn't launched Money Wise Doctor. And I thought even if I start something, if it had not started generating income, I'm fine for the next few months. And for the first one year, we didn't bother too much with any income or anything on Money Wise Doctor. So that's the emergency fund. So if you have an ISA, you have 20,000 pounds allowance, seven five, is going to emergency fund and i don't mean seven five for everyone i'm assuming that your monthly expenses is two thousand five hundred obviously for you to do that you need to then go and look at your monthly expenses really check what your budget is for real two thousand five hundred pounds times three that's seven five you still have another let's say is that twelve thousand five hundred left so you can decide okay for this twelve thousand five hundred pounds left because I've not bought my first house, or even I want to save for retirement, I'm going to put four thousand pounds into a lifetime ISA. That's if you are less than forty years. So you've taken seven five into your cash ISA. You've taken four thousand into your uh, lifetime ISA. And how much do you have left? About eight thousand or thereabout, or eight thousand five hundred pounds. You can then decide that this amount of money, eight thousand, is what I'm going to invest in, whether it's stocks, shares, index fund. That way, you can utilize your whole ISA. Now, for someone like me or for someone like you, depending on yourself, if you have emergency fund and you've not used it, the next year you might not need another emergency fund, and the next year again you might not need another emergency fund. So you can just leave the emergency fund where it is. But because you have another 20,000 pounds tax-free allowance, you can then decide, say, oh, for this year, I'm going to put 16,000 into my stock and shares ISA, and I'll put 4,000 into my lifetime ISA. Or you can decide to put all in stock and shares ISA. I mean, again, these are just numbers, depending on your situation. It doesn't mean that if you haven't got 20K, you can't invest. No, that's silly. If you've got 100 pounds, that could be your plan. It could be investing 100 pounds every month for the next sort of, um, you know, till you get more income. Yeah, but I hope it's clear. I hope I hope I hope it's, it's very clear to everybody. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that for all the answers, you have a total sum of twenty thousand maximum per spot, year. Spot on. That's spot it. On. Okay. And then one more question before uh, uh, the next person asks. Okay. Uh, I've been looking at property uh, for private residents, and at the same time looking at property for rentage or for business, and it seems as if uh, I'm seeing a cheaper one for rentage at this point. Uh, being a first-time buyer, is it advisable to buy a house for business first before buying the one for your private residence? Right. I'm just going to say today's seminar is mainly about stock market and all that. We've had seminars on property and the rest, but I'll answer your question quite quickly. I think it's always better to, in my own experience, I'd already bought where I lived first, then known how to live there before I rented it out and then bought another one. So I always think it's better option to buy where you live first. And some banks will not agree to lend you money if you if you tell them that um, I want to buy a property and um, I'm renting. Obviously, if you register a limited company for buying a house, like we we'll call it special purpose vehicle and SPV is a limited company you can use to buy a house. Then banks can lend that company money. But as an individual, some banks will say no. Um, but again, let's probably leave property for another discussion. For now, I want to sort of like focus on stock market and then um, stock and shares, bonds and all that. Well, I hope that answers your question, Oyendika. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Good. Okay. Should we crack on next? We've got about 15 minutes left. <laughs> next is Clement <laughs> Sharma. Thank you. Yeah, sorry if I didn't get the name right. Thank you. No, I actually got it pretty right. <laughs> Lovely. Dr. Sharma. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Sorry. I just had a question about tax relief on these ISAs. Of course. Uh, I uh, there's a situation where a person needs to bring his uh, annual income below 100,000. And I just went through your blog saying that the SIP is the best uh, option getting out of it if you're between 100,000 to 125. Do the, are there any ISAs that can bring your adjusted net income below 100,000? Or is SIP the only way we can do that? 
Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you very much. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that we get to most people ignore because a lot of time we're focusing on making money, but you need to think about how to optimize the money you've made to make sure that you're not paying half of it in tax. I think you're referring to the blog. I think that, that blog hits number one on Google. It's called How to Avoid the 60% Tax Trap. Is that the one you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's, 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 um, because you also lose your child uh, tax benefits if you go across 100,000. It's horrible. Yeah. Should I, do you mind if I just explain it to everyone? Just because some people might not understand it. They haven't done the homework like you have. You've read the blog. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have, but yeah, it's a nice one. <laughs> Thank you. So the 60% tax trap, basically a lot of people um, don't understand that in the UK think that the tax is at 20%, then 40%, then it's 45%. But unfortunately, especially for doctors, healthcare professionals, once you start earning above um, 100,000, um, well, the actual figure is um, 100,000 and 104,000 or thereabout. I think I specified the actual figure. Once you cross that amount, if you earn every 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 two pounds that you earn above a hundred thousand, for every two pounds extra you earn above hundred thousand, you lose one pound of personal allowance. Now write personal allowance down if you don't understand it. I will explain it in one sentence. So basically, what it means is that if you're a consultant or a GP or even you're a junior doctor or even a nurse, whatever you do, you are in above a hundred thousand, and it's coming to you as a salary. For every extra hundred pounds, you every extra two pounds you earn above a hundred thousand, you lose one pound of your personal allowance. So effectively, by the time your earning your earnings get up to hundred and twenty five thousand, one hundred and forty, so one two five one forty, one hundred and twenty five thousand basically, by then you'd have lost all your personal tax allowance. Why does that matter? In the UK, everyone has a personal tax allowance. That means that if you earn money below that amount, you don't pay any taxes on it. I just wanted to explain it so we can use that opportunity to answer other questions. So if you earn money below the personal tax allowance, you don't have to pay any amount, any tax on it. Can somebody tell me what's the personal tax allowance? How much is it? Twelve five. Twelve seven fifty. Thank you. Thank you. So very close, both of you. So it's 12,570. Thank you, Lisa. And uh, I don't know, was that Joel? So it's 12,570 is anyone who earns any money less than 12,570 is not liable to tax. So even yourself, when you earn money for the first 12,570 is fine. There's no tax on it. But once you cross 100,000, then you start losing that personal allowance. So that basically effectively you're being taxed 60 percent com, 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 when, when you compare it to the rest of the population now dr um dr Hammond's question is how can you avoid that 60 percent tax trap because once you get into that tax um band you don't just get taxed more you start losing things like child benefit all sorts of things like really really nonsense starts to happen um so the biggest way and dr sharma this is now your the answer to your question the biggest way is pension so why we say pension is because you are allowed to put up to sixty thousand pounds i mean a couple of years ago it used to be forty thousand even last year now the government allows you to put sixty thousand pounds into your pension tax-free obviously when you start pulling the pension in the future it could be taxed but again there's a way to withdraw it that you don't get any tax so pension is the biggest way. So if you take, you don't have to put 60,000 in pension, you put as much as you can, any money you don't need straight away into your pensions, whether it's your NHS pension or is a self-invested personal pension, that's SIP. So that's one way. Now, ISAs on their own cannot directly reduce your, you know, taxable income, but they can help in, in certain ways. I'll give you an example. For instance, when considering that 60% tax trap, they are considering all your income. And remember, most of the time when we talk about income, people are thinking about their salary. No, I've got a rental property. If I get, let's say, rough number 10,000 from it, that's an income for me. If you invested in stock and, stock and shares or, and you made any money, that's an income for you. If you are a consultant, Dr. Sharma, what do you do? What's your specialty? I'm in orthopedics, but uh, orthopedics. I'm not a consultant yet, no. 
you will, SAS, so. you will you will be soon and sas is also sort of like quite specialist yeah sorry to put it on the spot but basically your sas you're working in orthopedics you're being paid some money let's say you're being paid 80k and then you have a part-time job you do or you did some extra shift in the hospital or you're also a lecturer like i'm visiting sometime i, I visit an examiner at university of plymouth all that money goes into getting you to that 100k you get taxed so pretty much you really want to do everything you can do to reduce the amount of money that goes into that tax trap and i think on the website the biggest thing we've said is basically maximize your pension contribution um if you can afford it that's the biggest thing you can do um of course there are other things like taking advantage of salary sacrifice schemes that donating to charity obviously if you donate to charity you can get some tax relief um utilizing your ISA allowance like i explained here has a way of actually reducing the amount of income that is coming to you that is taxable but it's not the biggest lever you can pull on the 60 percent tax trap um yeah if you want to read that article i've posted the link in um, the chat box again and if you watch the video later hopefully you'll be able to find it on the website you can go and check it there um we'll post the link in the comments you can go have a read about it and again if you have questions ask me in the comments and there's someone from the team who obviously answer i'll do our best to to respond um does that one, yeah sorry one little more thing if uh, if you do end up opening a private pension i'm not sure if this is relevant do we have to contribute every year because if you go into another job for for the sabbatical your income might drop so is it possible not to contribute for a couple of years in these pensions and then carry on absolutely so your private pension remember i don't the, i don't i'm not sure if you've read the article as well i wrote on sip uh okay, I'll, 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 I'll go back to, yeah but yeah. i'll sum, i'll summarize it for you so a private pension sip is called self-invested personal pension that's not the only type of private pension that's one i think most doctors might benefit from there is sas which is a different altogether complicated scheme uh but Private pension is self-invested personal pension. So you are in charge. I posted the link to the article in the comments as well. You're in charge of your private pension. You can decide whenever you want to invest in it, you can, how much you want to put in it. The only thing is that for it to be tax-free, you cannot exceed 60,000. So if you take a break, go on sabbatical, do whatever you like, you can come back this year, put in 1,000, and the next day you put in 5,000. Maybe you become like a consultant, you start working in the private sector, any more money, you put in 60,000. And the beautiful thing about the pension is that you can go back three years. I think pension probably deserves some, a separate session, but with pension, you can go back all the way three years back so if you've missed some years, because some people come and say, oh, what do I do? Andy, maybe this guy is a consultant, uh, physician or surgeon, and now they're in that 60% tax trap. And we're looking at, oh, you've not contributed pension. Now you've got some free money, but you don't want to have to pay more tax than you have to. You can contribute backwards up to three years. And there are quite a few seed platforms that are beautiful. They are great. Um, I use Invest in Gene, which is a good one, but there are multiple there are multiple seed platforms there. Um, we did a video and we compared the different uh, seed platforms in the UK. Um, you can find that on the podcast. You can just head over to MoneyWise Doctor and you'll be able to get that as well. I think I'll, I'll post the link if, if I can find it. Um, so that you can also have a look at that. Um, yeah, thank and of you. course, thank you. No problem. If you've got any questions, ask it on any of the blogs or YouTube um, videos, and we'll do our best. We we'll always do our best. We we'll might not answer immediately, but we we'll always do our best to give a very detailed answer. All right, thank you, Doctor. Thank, you. thank that was, you. That was a very good question. Now, next. Next is Sissy. Right, Sissy, please. Thank you, Andy, for the great presentation. Um, thank you. My question is: Can you share with us platforms? which we can use to buy um, shares. Um, two, what are your recommendations for the index funds, index funds like the S&Ps, FTSC, and then what's your recommendation? And is it if you can also show us um, or give us an idea how we can get to find the platforms to start and also monitoring as well. Yeah. And then, um, of course in monitoring the process of buying and selling okay yeah that's a fair that's a fair question um um there are quite there are, there are many platforms i think we should do a video that just addressing all the platforms i can tell you the ones i use personally 
Um, I've used quite a few. Um, personal activities in YouTube. All right, okay. So I've used. Um, oh yeah, someone has posted. That's that's great. Thank you, Yudi. So <laughs> that's the same video. <laughs> so when it comes to investing platforms, I I've used Trading Two One Two. I've used them. Um, a free trade which was really great simple to use platform and um i currently recommend for indexes because i'm i now like sort of like looking at for my children and all that i like index i use invest engine invest engine the good thing about invest engine if you are buying index fund or etfs is all on invest engine they have all sorts of exchange traded funds you can go there and also they have the lowest fees for sip when it comes to sip and um, when it comes to SIP, if you're opening a SIP, then Invest Engine is a platform I recommend. Now, when it comes to ISA, if you want to open, remember what I said before you start investing, use an ISA first. And Invest Engine doesn't charge a fee for their ISA. So that's a good place to start as well for your ISA. I posted a link in the in the chat box as well for my Invest Engine link, both for the ISA and for the SIP. So that's one way to think about it. But there's other platform. There's Trading212, there's Free Trade. Um, I've used a different platform, but the main thing I check for in all these platforms is the fee. So you want to make sure that you're not paying too much for the fees because fees really matter. I think we've had other sessions where we explain how fees can impact you long term as an investor so you really need to look out for the one that has the lowest fees now today i'm recommending invest engine but tomorrow there might be a different platform that has a um, cheaper um fees than them so that's why i recommend invest engine now for those of you who want to trade individual stocks you don't just want to um do um etfs you want to be able to buy individual stocks I do recommend free trade. Free trade is also good. They've got an ISA and they've got all that stuff. I've used trading 212 as well. It's equally good. But for some reason, I found free trade a bit more, you know, it seems like a simple platform that most people are able to use, even if they are new. The only downside with free trade is I think they've got a fee. Free trade has a fee for the ISA. 5.99 or they're about five pound 99 per month that puts some people off but it all depends on how much you're really buying in terms of your stock and shares because 5.99 is like 60 pounds for a year so i i still have my free trade account i have my trading 212 i have my invest engine but when it comes to actually buying index fund etfs i think invest engine is by far the best option and i also recommend it for sip as well um if you use our link Invest Engine, we've had meetings with them, interviewed them in the past, and they've actually decided to offer £50 welcome bonus for anyone who's coming with our link. Unfortunately, they won't offer you that same £50 bonus if you just come in directly, um, but they've agreed to offer a £50 bonus to recognize what we are doing in helping doctors become financially smarter. So if you come in with Invest Engine with any of the SIP account or um any of the isa accounts you'll be able to get 50 pounds bonus to start i think they've got terms and conditions so i'll suggest you watch the video i already done about it and also check out their website um the other question you asked was about monitoring stock because we've got very little time left monitoring stock is a very long discussion those are things i'll be covering in the master class it's not something we can discuss in one hour basically knowing how to look at quarterly reports look at uh, the numbers of a company if you are buying index fund you don't really need to monitor whatever you can just invest regularly put it in automation but if you are buying individual stocks then you really really want to know how to monitor your stocks i don't wake up every day i've been investing for almost 20 years i don't wake up every day sweating thinking what's my stocks doing i sometimes don't even look for four months five months except when i hear bad news whenever i'm, I'm whenever there's bad news i'm I'm not I'm not evil, but I start thinking there's opportunities to buy things cheaply. Like if there's a company that's having issues and you just look at their numbers, you understand that you look at their cash flow statement, you look at their so we look at things like cash flow statements, you look at their income, you look at their balance sheet, say, oh, this company is actually really doing well. They just have bad news because the stock market is usually more like a voting machine rather than a weighing machine. So being able to know when to buy is really quite important. I don't think it's something you should do as a beginner to really, really understand what you're doing.
does that help yes very well thank you so much <laughs> sorry just very one, very long answer <laughs> just one more just before i i drop off is the you mentioned the vehicle which is the um stock and shares yes um, how do we i mean there is a number uh, around from banks from um, different ways what will be your advice in getting a stock and shares please okay do you, do you mean getting stock and shares isa yes um i've just mentioned a few like i mentioned the uh, invest engine you can open a stock and shares i sign invest engine so invest engine is a platform that provides stock and shares isa right. um you can go straight to invest engine there's trading two one two but again i told you the challenges with trading two one two and free trade I think I'm quite in favor of an invest engine mainly because it's fee free at the yep. moment. Let's Thank just you. double check to make sure it's still fee free. So they don't charge a fee to invest if you're buying ETFs. Um, yeah, so that's invest engine for you. Okay, good. So Thanks. I don't use bank. I don't use my bank for stock and shares. Like so. That's a different discussion and banks are not going to love me, but I'll tell you why maybe another time. Ask me in the community, ask me in the private community. All right. I think we can take just one more question because I promise, yeah, I've got I've got a baby, so I promised uh, my bosses. I've got like a four-year-old boss and a three-month-old boss, as well as my wife. I can't really stay three hours like the last time, but if we can take one more question, I think Ismail has been raising his hand for a while. Is he still here? I, I think he put it down. Oh, yeah, I think I, you answered all my questions. That's why I just oh, that, put down that, my hands. Thank that, you very much. That's brilliant. All right. Well, lovely to catch up. Be before the final question, can I just say, some of you are not aware that I send a free weekly newsletter. So there's a free weekly newsletter. We explain all these things. I recognize some of your names because they are among, among the about, about 2,500 doctors now um, that read that newsletter. So what I try to do in that newsletter is I want to I tell you stuff like this, but in little chunks where I break it down into little chunks, easy ways you can understand it. I also tell you when I release a new video, I tell you when there's a new event. Like some people contacted me this week. They are, um, one was a bit upset, wasn't aware of the master class that was coming up because he was really ready for it. He, he knew that I was planning it at some point, but he didn't know because he met because the email went to his spam box. So I, I send a weekly newsletter. If you're a doctor, healthcare professional, or you know a doctor, healthcare professional, um, then you can sign up for the weekly newsletter. Um, Aman Shama, thank you so much. Say so thank you, Andy. Great session as always. Thank you, Aman Shama. Aman Shama has a fantastic YouTube channel as well. I've been there. Um, yeah, so if you want the weekly newsletter, I've sent the script for you. You can uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to that uh, newsletter so you, you hear from me every week if not if you don't like what i'm sending you can easily unsubscribe don't worry but nobody seems to want to unsubscribe thank you so much for you're, welcome. Questions. you're welcome um, would you advise if you're open uh, an isa account for your kids would you want would you advise it to be cash or stock and shares thank you oh i think this one is easy Again, this is not professional financial advice because I don't know your current situation. But if you have a child that is less than 18, I tend to prefer stock and shares because remember, stock and shares over a long period of time, you do far, 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 far better. You can't even compare than cash. Over a long period of time, we do far, far better than bonds. So you can't even really compare the, the two. But if it's cash that I need next year, if it's cash that I need, let's say, um, in a in a couple of you know in a couple of months or something, it's not something you want to put in the stock market. Let me see if I can find something about the junior ISA. I can't find the junior ISA stuff. Um, okay, don't worry. If I find it, I can share it in the community. Um, but basically. If you're thinking of a long-term horizon, let's say investing for your children, they are four years, then it's got to be stock and shares. It's got to be stock and shares. And if you're not very confident to select individual stocks, because for instance, when people hear that, oh, I bought this stock and then it tripled, and then they look at my results and compare it to S&P 500, let's say I'm doing like times four, they don't understand there's the other side of risk. 
which they need to understand. So if you're investing for your children, you're not really sure. You can just buy an index. An index is like ETF. You can go to somewhere like Invest Engine, buy an index. The index will just sort of like buy a basket of stocks. The popular one is S&P 500. So it, it carries the top 500 companies in the US based on their price. So if it's based on their capitalization. So basically how, how big they are. So if you think about your Google, Facebook, Coca-Cola, all of them, they are all in the S&P 500. So you are saying, I don't know which of these companies are going to do well, but I'm just going to buy the 500 of them. And when one is not doing well, they take it out of the index. So stock and shares ISA might be a way to go. However, if you've been following my channel or you've been following my blog, I have a bit of a challenge with junior ISA because when your children turn 18, they take control of the junior ISA they are in charge of it and they can do whatever they like. You know, if you ask me, I've got kids now as well. I think I prefer stock and shares I size by far because stock market beats property. If you're looking at five years, property might do better. But if you're looking at 10 years, 15 years, stock market beats property, beats bonds, beat everything all together. This is not an opinion. This is data that you can find out there. You can go out and look at my website or you can look on Google. And nowadays, you can have, have AI answer some of these questions for you. Right. I hope that answers your question. And I want to congratulate you, Molabake. You managed to ask uh, three or four questions in this session. It's not easy to accomplish. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> can I just ask a little, um, I'll ask a little favor. For those of you who have attended, if you want to give us a review, whether it's whether it's um, whether it's favorable or not, um, I just want to post a link. There is um, a website we we collect some of our reviews. Some people have sent us really nice reviews and um, basically testimonials because that helps other people to find out whether we're messing about or we're serious. You can imagine the quality that the quality of what we can do within a 90 minutes event. So think about being in the community, the private community, or even in the general community, or being in the four weeks event. But if you want to tell us if you found it useful, you can do a video review. I like those ones. Or and uh, or you can do a text review. I know some people are video shy. So I click, I put, I posted the link for the reviews. I'll say reviews here. You can go to that um, link there, say yeah, that money wise doctor and give us a review when I, in the middle of the night, I'm preparing for a session or writing a blog. And I'm like, oh, I'm done with this thing. I'm not writing a newsletter. And I go and read some reviews or emails or heart, heartwarming uh, messages, especially the type I got on my bad day. Yeah, it keeps me going. So we say we don't mind even if, if we do most of what we do for free. Yeah, that's me asking for a review there. All right. I don't know, can we draw the curtains here? Has anyone got any question about the workshop coming up or there's something you want to ask? Um, I think we've got like two more, maybe five more minutes. We can answer that. Um, um, hello. Hi, Hi. sorry. Um, if I register for the masterclass, I'm not, I'm not able to attend one of the days. Will I have the opportunity to um, get a clip or just um, see what was taught on that particular day? Thank you. Okay. I initially said no, but now I've got like a couple of people who genuinely like a consultant, A and E consultant. I can't expect them to leave their job, and the masterclass was only announced just recently. Um, so I've, I've decided yes, we're going to record it. I know um a medicine consultant. She's joining us a bit late. Um, so we're going to record it. If you register for the masterclass. You're going to have access to the video and apart from the video you're going to have um, access to um, other resources all the other resources that um, we've used you know to analyze stocks links to the websites we use when i talk about pe ratio eps how can you find those things and how can you know when to disregard them and when to look use them uh they are basically the beginning they are not the end so yes israel if you register for that we're going to give you the video recording and also you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one with me after that as well as four weeks group sessions and then 12 weeks for free i didn't want to add that one but we added 12 weeks extra in the premium community that was a private community 
we'll give that for free. I just want to make sure that totally, once you finish this master class, it should be enough to set you up to be investing for life. Once you get the skill, just like you learn how to do a canola as a doctor, you don't have to relearn it again, as long as you learned it properly. Yeah, okay. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, that answers it because on Saturday I'll be on call. So I just Oh yeah, to... okay. <laughs> that makes that makes sense. What's your specialty? What do you do? Um I'm currently a GP trainee, so I just want to get the information. Yeah. Oh yeah, we don't doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals, your job is really important. I'm a doctor as well. Today I had a meeting with someone who didn't know I was a doctor. I'm actually a fully trained. I've been a doctor for 14 years. But it reminded me of when I was 21 speaking in business conferences and also speaking for my stockbroker and people didn't really believe i was a student and they didn't believe i was a medical student <laughs> so yes your job is important we don't want you to miss your call register for the master class we'll register we we'll record everything we'll give it to you in addition to the recording you have the opportunity to watch it and then join the other classes which will now be sort of like practical stuff if you hit any issues while you're trying to invest or something you don't understand that will be addressed over that four weeks and you still have the opportunity to book a power hour one-on-one -on -one with me directly where you can still ask any questions and of course 12 weeks in the group where you'll be able to still interact with other people who are on the same journey with you because a lot of times what uh, one thing i learned from dr matiga in our last podcast is it's not enough to have a goal but surround yourself with people who have a similar goal and then it becomes normal for you to go in towards that direction because environment dictates performance if you spend one thousand five two thousand pounds to learn a skill that can help you to avoid maybe losing hundred thousand or one million in the future because i've had consultants who said i invested in so and so last three years and i lost all my money and I've had even SHOs or regular GPs, um, like obviously GPs and um, consultants so sometimes earn more money and they invest more. But there are SHOs here that actually earn quite a bit from Lukum. I've seen people lose 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 just because they didn't understand how to manage their risk. When people really want to wriggle out of the 60% tax trap or they're trying to invest and they hit, they hit, they already know what they're doing, but they just need help for that next level. Um, I'm going to add that one-on-one -on -one as a bonus for those who attend this masterclass. But yes, I'm really sorry for those who are planning to attend in October. I know someone asked me, can I join in October? September is really busy. I'm really sorry. We wouldn't be doing it in October or November. I don't think we'll be doing it. I don't know if we'll ever be doing it anytime soon. But what we can do for those who have attended, we'll record it for you. For those who signed up but they're not able to attend one of the sessions or they're not able to attend the first day, we'll record everything for you and you'll be able to assess it as well. Thank you. Omola Bakke wants to know um, how soon she will get the video from today's meeting and if the comments, uh, you know, the links in the comments will also be available as a transcript from this video. When we make the video, we will we'll email you. If you want to make sure that you get the video, you should check out for your email in the links. Once the video is ready to go live, then you get an email. For those of you who obviously are on the mailing list, you get an email to tell you when the video itself is live. But I know it's likely not going to come out till after the investment workshop because the whole team is busy getting things ready. But don't worry. As for the links, yes, we'll do our best to include all of them. But if there's any link you're not sure of or you want to ask a question about, um, head over to the website or the YouTube channel and you can ask a question there. We always respond. I think we always respond. We don't respond to people who come and say, buy crypto or do stuff like that on the channel but we respond to legitimate questions all right i think i'm going to draw the curtains here again if you want to reach out is support at moneywisedoctor.com uh that's the email um we're going to close registration for um the master class in the next 48 hours obviously we've closed the waiting list now people are still able to get on but we're no longer sending any email to the waiting list um because we think that those who are aware that have signed up, they're usually quite enough to get to get the masterclass to go. And thank you all so much. I really appreciate you spending your Wednesday afternoon with me. It's been the best audience ever. Um, hopefully in the future, I'll leave it to Chego, um, the rest of the team. If you're able to put together more Q and A's, it's really quite difficult to do sometimes because of getting the right time for everybody. But well, hopefully, you might be able to address more issues. Um, but I encourage you to join the newsletter 
and join the maybe possibly yeah mary jane yeah i see i'm looking forward to seeing the master class thank you i'm i'm seeing some people here who are coming for the master class yeah so join the newsletter so you can know whatever we 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 release stuff or have events like this and hopefully if you see you in the newsletter you're active my invite you to the community i can see daniel and a few other people here already in the community all right should we should we draw the curtains here now okay yeah i think we can all right so you can see the link to go and give us a review if you if you care for but head over to the channel whatever you can find there ask us we can even make the videos all right bye bye